everyone and welcome to the Anime Zillia. And today we'll be talking about Dr. Stone episode 18 entitled Stone Wars. Yes, we start off right where we left off last week's episode with the reveal that Tsukasa's army will be invading Ishigami village in the near future. This is because um, Gen basically told him and he was sent ahead of time by Tsukasa to basically be a spy on the village. To basically make sure they're not weary of anyone else or anything suspicious. So basically it could be a massive slaughter. But why is Tsukasa worried about this village? Well, he wants to invade this village because Tsukasa knows that Senku's body has not been found. Therefore, he's come to the conclusion that Senku must still be alive. And Gen even says that there was no sight of a body. So this backs up that idea. And while Tsukasa is a very worried person, and he likes to be very cautious. Now, he knows that if Senku possibly finds this village, then Senku would have the resources that he needs in order to be able to rebuild a science civilization, and then maybe a weapon to combat Tsukasa himself. So, this is the reason as to why Tsukasa wants to invade this village and basically just massacre it, take over it, and just have it as his own secondary base. Because we see the base that we currently have for Tsukasa, and I don't want to be living there, that's for sure. <laughs> I can see why Gen likes to uh, pretend to be a spy. Now, just like as it was planned or it's in a story, the village is met with invaders. And this scene does three things right off the bat. It shows Tsukasa's army, and most of them are brainless kind of brutes, with some being pretty useful. For example, we're told by Gen that there's obviously these top people in Tsukasa's army at the moment. And if you were to basically have Tsukasa come, or this other person, then, you know, you want to run. That's your first, that's your first do. Nothing else, just run. Obviously, they're on a deserted island, so that's probably not a good idea. Whoever built the island probably should have built it a bit better. Now, number two, this gives more shine to... Actually, no, before I go on to number two, continue with number one. This hint at characters that are possibly Sukasa level or, like, just beneath does intrigue me a little bit and I'm interested to find out more characters as we go along because honestly you can't have an army full of brainless dopes like we see in this episode. Yes we have Hyoga which I'll get to in a minute and which is basically the other guy you want to run from. Um, which ironic in it right? If Tsukasa or this other guy comes you want to run? Oh wait this other guy comes. <laughs> so um, yeah Basically, I'm intrigued to see who else is on Team Tsukasa, just because some of the characters that I know of are pretty good, and I want to see the anime adaptation of them. Number two. It gives more shine to Kinro's character. As he tries valiantly to hold off the invaders. Oh, and we also see him get new glasses this episode. Now, apologies if I have mixed up the two names. I always seem to mix uh, Kinro and Ginro up, but I'm pretty sure he's Kinro. With the K, not a G. And, uh, yeah, so, basically we get that. Now, we do also get a little bit of, um, the bond between Ginro and Kinro. Which I'm not going to put as a separate point, but it was nice to see, because as we see Kinro struggling, Ginro is tasked with cutting a bridge open. Oh, cutting a bridge off, basically. Stopping the enemies from being able to advance. Now, he, he can't bring himself to do this, because they're like brothers to each other. They might be brothers, although I don't think so, looking at them. But, anyway, they share a nice tight bond that basically means that they wouldn't want to kill each other or do anything that might risk the life of the other one. We obviously know that Kinro is a sucker for the rules and can be quite stubborn sometimes, but even I do believe that you know, he's got this inner, inner caring, I would say, horribly phrased, for Ginro himself. So if he was in the same position, I don't think Ginro would have been able to do the same. 
Right, now number three, it introduces us to the character of Hyoga. Now first off, this character's design looks amazing. It's intimidating, um, it's kind of old-fashioned with the style, which kind of fits with the theme of Dr. Stone. I like the mask, it's a great addition, and I want to see what it's covering up. It's kind of apparent in most animes that characters have masks and something is underneath those masks. But we don't actually see any kind of scarring from the uh, petrification. So maybe that's what he's trying to cover up. Who knows? And I did like the fact that on all the brutes, we kind of see the scarring um, go all the way down the eyes. But then some of them even went through the teeth. Weird, but okay. Anyway, we're talking about Hyoga's character. And honestly, it was great. The spear that he uses is nothing to be taken lightly as well. We see him easily handle the likes of Ginro, Kohaku, Magma, uh, Ginro. And the style that he uses seems pretty interesting as well. It looks like he's managed to master the style that he's using, and the bamboo type of spear that he's got allows him to be more flexible. As we see his character kind of use this kind of crescent, not crescent, but full moon type of attack, where he kind of just swings it up, and his reaction speed is very fast. We see a very nice combination between um, Kohaku and Kinro, and basically he manages to react to that instantly. Swath being targeted from Magma to Kohaku in pretty much an instant, which I thought was pretty good. So, from a skill standpoint, he definitely is someone you want to run away from, like Gen said. Now, so far, first impressions, I like um, Shioga as a character. I think he seems pretty interesting. Now... In this episode, Hyoga is the main problem that the Science Nation need to be in order to protect the village, as the invaders will return in three days' time when the storm arrives. So what's the solution? Well, the solution to this is... Katanas. Katanas are amongst the best weapons science can make um, in modern times and they prove to be very useful in the fight against these dumb soldiers. However, their main target, Hyoga, isn't phased very much by this. Yes, he's impressed, but the team, like I said, of Kinro, Ginro, Magma, Kohaku, plus Kohaku's father, still don't, don't match up to this guy and his spear techniques. And seeing Kinro use a spear, was um, a, a katana in this form, it was kind of weird, because we've always seen him use a spear. Oh well, I guess they just wanted to show it off. Now, the visual representation in how they did it was pretty good. Um, I like the fact is they kind of all jumped in and it was like freeze-framed. Um, they had like this imaginary kind of thing of them wearing yukatas, wielding their katanas. I thought it was pretty cool, very japanese type themes. Um, flowed nicely as well. Looked aesthetically pleasing. The only thing I will say that was kind of odd was the way they explained how they made it. Now, again, I'm not an expert in science or in um, blacksmithing, and neither is Senku, but they say they need to fold a normal katana to make it perfect 10 times um, after you basically heat it up, bash it, heat it, cool it, bash it, whatever. However, he says, nah, we can skip this because we've got time restrictions. We can just do two folds. The m most important thing is the um, dark lining on the top of the blade. That's what's going to cut. So we make sure that that's basically done properly. It wasn't very scientifically heavy, but at the same time, I did honestly find it a little bit confusing. But nevertheless, the Science Nation now have katanas, and this gives them a big power boost. Um, just not enough. The only way that they manage to beat Kyoga is with a combo between Senku, Suika, and Gen. Now, Suika is basically tasked with finding the trail that Gen has left behind for him, because Gen goes off with Kyoga and the others after the whole confrontation. And when she finds her, she delivers a message, which is basically a small dagger. Now this kind of 
Oh, I'm, I'm disappeared. Uh, this basically kind of um, allows Gen to use a small dagger to tamper with the bamboo spear, causing it to break midway through a battle against the team of Magma, Kohaku and Kino. Now, this puts Gen in a really bad position, as he's now officially betrayed the Tsukasa nation, and he's actually officially joined Team Senku in the eyes of um, Tsukasa. But I can't see Tsukasa being too happy with this result. So Tsukasa might end up joining the fray at some point in the near future. He might decide to come after Gin or Gen, and he might even decide to come to the village himself to scout things out. Now, one last thing I want to say about Gen before I end this review is the um, many faces that we see of him in this episode. Gen has so many cool faces in this episode that I just absolutely love every single one of them. There you go, I'll, blow, I'll uh, make it bigger so you can see just here. Now, these were hilarious throughout. They all went with this character nicely, and with him being a mentalist and being someone that can talk very well into any situation, I absolutely did enjoy it. It made me like Gen's character even more, and I just appreciated it all around. Overall, this was a good episode. The animation was nice, the sound effects worked really nicely, um, but it wasn't a very plot-moving episode. However, it was a great introduction to the character of Yoga, and I'm very keen to find out where this character goes in the near future. Is he going to become an ally soon, or is he going to stay an enemy? I don't know, but let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section below. Like the video if you liked the video, dislike the video if you disliked the video, subscribe if you're new so you never miss a video from me, and until next time, I hope you'll have an amazing day, and I'll catch you next time. Goodbye for now.